What's up, NPC heads? I just want to do a, uh, a brief history on uh, NPC samplers, and you know, so that you know, you might be wondering like what all hype is about. You know, why people pay for these joints when you could just use like Fruity Loops or something. You could download your free. You know, GarageBand comes with Max for free, and you could pretty much you could really get the same results. It's true, but not. Anyway, so why the NPC is dope for hip hop, right? Is because um, from my perspective, um, software is overdone. Uh, yes, you know, I started with software. I started um, with, with a Reason. Somebody gave me a copy of Reason, Reason 1 when it first came out. So, um, you know, that gives you an idea of how long I've been doing this shit. <sighs> a long time. Um, so I started with Reason. That's how I learned MIDI and all that stuff. And that was cool. That was fun. I'm grateful for that I had the opportunity to use that. Uh, then I, I used Cubase just because somebody gave me a cracked version. I was broke as fuck at the time. I couldn't afford to buy anything. I just had a shitty computer and somebody hooked me up with software. So that's how I got started. A couple of years into my beat making, I touched, I touched, um, I put, got my hands on um, a friend of mine's uh, MPC 2000. And once I learned the, the basics of that, there was no going back. I mean, maybe my beats technically, you know, the, the, maybe the technology was a step backwards, but my creative process, like, was blown out of the water because just the way these things are designed, like, the just it, they're so streamlined that nothing can really compare to this workflow. I don't think anything out there still to this day compares to the NPC workflow. Um, how you could just record a sound, assign it to a to a pad, uh, you know, edit it, chop it up, and then sequence it, and then play it, play, and then boom, you got a beat in five minutes. I bet you in five minutes I could make a banger easily. I could find a sample, and in five minutes I could be rocking out like this. So. I don't think you could really do that. I mean, you could do it on other things, but, you know, and the, the, the layout of this and maybe this SP-1200, which I've never used, but it seems like it works sim in a similar fashion to NPCs, is just unbeatable. How fast it is. How, you, you know, with software, they give you 10,000 plugins and options, and you're like, oh, maybe I could use this plugin. I'll put this delay on it, and I'll put this filter. And just, before you know it, you're lost in the details. You're missing the point. You forgot what the fuck you were out for. You're trying to get that, you know, um, in fact... I would say the best beats are the raw ones, the ones that use limited technology. So this is limited technology. This gives you a perfect sequencer, um, nice basic uh, sampler and sample editing uh, features, some basic effects. That's it. No more, no less. And um, so you could really, you, you know, you, I would venture to say that you, some of your favorite producers probably got an NPC. And most of the best hip-hop was probably made on one of these. You know, I mean, there's a couple other pieces of gear that, that are sort of, you know, in that same kind of dimension of, you know, um, notoriety. But I would say this is the, the dominant one. So the history on this is, um, in the 80s, there was this dude named uh, Roger Lynn who had, um, he had a, an analog drum machine that looked kind of resembled an MPC. So it had 16 pads, um, but it wasn't a sampler. It was a drum machine, meaning uh, it was an analog drum machine, which it generated sounds, you know. Uh, electronically, so it was analog. It didn't. It didn't rely on sampled, you know, recorded sounds. Um, it was like um, it generated the sounds, right? So, um, so he had this machine that had a similar, which was the the, the predecessor of the NPCs, and uh, but it was so expensive. He had a company called Lindrum. The machine was called Lindrum. Actually, it was called Roger Lind Electronics, but the machine was called Lindrum. But the machine was so expensive that you know nobody could afford it. I, Maybe he sold a couple, but like he couldn't really sustain the business, so he went out of business. And then um, him and Akai uh, got together and collaboratively released the first NPC, which was, um, you know, a sampling drum machine. It was basically an upgraded Lindrum, but it was used. You could record your own sounds and use them for, you know, for uh, content as opposed to just sounds that it came with. So and that was a huge hit, especially because it coincided with like when hip hop was really taking off in the '80s. When, uh, you know, and hip-hop was, like, really using a lot of samples. It's probably, like, you know, the first art form to really embrace sampling as, like, its primary kind of, you know, way of making music. So, you know, at the time, so I guess, you know, them, you know those shits were flying off the shelves. So they came out with an upgraded model, the MPC 3000, um, which was also a hit. All the producers were using them, you know, pretty much anybody who was producing back then were probably using one of those. Those in the SP-1200 was the other big one. Um, which works similarly, 
but it was it was actually older, so it had like limited functions, very limited uh, sample time and whatnot. Um, so anyway, and then um, after the 3000, Roger Lin and uh, Akai parted ways. They had a falling out, but I guess you know Akai still had the um, the patents and uh, to the technology, to, which was the MIDI sequencer, the sampling, all that stuff. Uh, so they went ahead and continued making newer models. Um, they made a, the next one was the MPC 2000, which is my first MPC. Um, then they came out with the XL, which is basically an MPC 2000 with some a little uh, some improvements, like a tilt screen, so you could sit back and just tilt the screen and see what's going on. You didn't have to stand over it like an MPC like these giants. This the 1000, the ones with you have to kind of stand over them to work usually. But once you get that flip screen, it's definitely uh, an upgrade. Because you could just be sitting here. Once you know your buttons and stuff, you don't have to really look down or read anything. You're just looking at the screen. So, that was a 2000 XL. Um, also, you know, I mean, there was some small, uh, you know, software upgrades or whatnot, but um, pretty much it was the same machine. And after that, they started dropping the 4000, which was a fully featured sampler. It had, it's basically an NPC plus, and it had like the sound module with like multi sampled instruments and stuff like that. So, that was more like a picture like a software sampler you know uh, which you could have your pianos guitars synths all that kind of stuff um, built into it or you know you could you could load those those programs that were like multi sample um, so you know I never had a 4000 so I can't speak much on that um, but pretty much that was like the flagship model and then you know then they dropped the 1000 the 2500 which were basically the same machine uh, internally I had the same heart and soul but um, same software but um, the, the the 2500 had the, 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 the screen that you could um, shift up and the 1000 was sort of the entry level model it was marketed as a portable one um, and they had the shitty pads the 1000 had crappy pads that was a different technology they took a step to s in a different direction trying to you know something new with the pads and they failed those things were aw awful you know they just stopped working after a while all of a sudden you're like you can't all of a sudden excuse me all of a sudden they just wouldn't work and you have to beat the shit out of them and the buttons started going out of so uh, whoever made those machines for them sucked but um you know but it's still a dope it's very usable you just have to um, you know they came out with the pad upgrade and then um, you know occasionally a button will go out and you have to fix it you gotta learn how to solder and stuff like that which are not bad skills to learn so you know so good um, but um, so that's the 1000, and then and then, they, and then they dropped the 500, which was the really portable one because it runs on batteries, and they slimmed down some of the features. And the price points on these is crazy cheap now. So because I got this for used from Guitar Center for a buck fifty. So if you're into making beats or whatever, you know, curious about MPC or whatever, you know, you gotta cop one of these because a buck fifty you really can't go wrong. And then you could say, you know, what I'm saying, I mean, you really. It's a fully featured NPC. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, like the, some of the limitations are like the limitations are not really, you know, like they're not really. I mean, they're fine. You know, they, there really is no. I mean, to me, uh, the screen it, it's not as fast at edit, sample editing. That's pretty and or flying around the operating system because you got two lines of text as opposed to a lot more on the bigger screens. But you know, it's the same sequencer. Um, you know the same kind of work you know same sort of functions so you know dope machine um, I would definitely cop one of these if you're short on money and then, so now MPC now Kai came out with the um, the the, uh, the new the new the new sort of um, the new line right the current MPC models are just MIDI controllers which means there's no they're not standalone they, they don't work without a computer you have to plug them in and then the software you install the software on your computer and this is just controls the software on your computer. So I was very skeptical as a hardware head is I don't like to be tied up to a computer. I'm sort of like I like to work in the box. But um, you know, after I copped the Renaissance used, I always get all my shit used. Um so it was like less than half price. But and I gotta say, this shit, you know, it's fun to use, it's the same thing. It's really they they, they did they did it up, you know. I know they're going head to head with machine and uh they did their thing. I mean, um so basically, you could put your computer away. You don't need to look at it at all, except for like saving your files. I mean, work on just a hardware unit, um, and it's pretty dope. I, I, to me, the Renaissance is probably the best because um, it's got the sound sound interface, the audio interface built into it, 
and um, which and it's got a preamp so you can plug a turntable directly into it, which is pretty dope. Um, so you know, to me, that's a dope machine, especially considering I, you can get them for four hundred bucks on eBay. That's what I paid. Um, totally worth it. Um, you could get a, a studio, which is the slim down version for um, you know like two hundred, two fifty. Totally worth it. So you know, if you're just thinking about it and getting getting into it, I would consider you know five hundred, which is like dirt cheap right now. You know, back in the day. When I started making beats, in fact, I couldn't start making beats until I was an adult because I grew up poor. So when I was a kid, this shit was not even an option. I didn't even own a computer until I was 20. So the fact that like nowadays you could just start making beats for free or next to nothing, for 100 bucks, you get an MPC, a legendary machine, is you motherfuckers got it good. Is all I got to say. Because back, back in the day, most people that wanted to make beats were, for the most part, for, from the hood or they were poor or working class folks, right? And, you know, you had to, like, sell drugs or somebody had to die and you had to inherit some money or some shit. Like, to, to stop making beats, you had to invest G's. And most kids, most working class kids don't got G's. You might get $100 for, for Christmas or for your birthday if you're lucky. But that shit don't get you nowhere. You know, a Technique 1200 was your, tur you know, a turntable. It's like $500. It's still $500, but you don't need it anymore. Uh, but an NPC was like a G and up. Usually, you know, used an NPC two thousand would be like a thousand dollars, eight hundred dollars. Most kids didn't see that kind of money ever, so you know it's cost prohibitive. I started when I started making beats. I was using software, a pirated software. Somebody hooked me up with a version of Reason One, which shows you how how old I am. Like Reason One, that's I started from the first version of Propeller Head Reason, and then so I learned my basics of MIDI and stuff like that on that, um, and then. You know, I use Cubase, and then, you know, I, I got to try uh, an MPC, and that's it. Like, I was gone. Uh, I couldn't go back. To, I mean, I still fuck with software, you know, f for, like, synths and stuff like that. I might, but for the most part, I'm always on this. So, um, yeah, man, uh, basically, sorry, I went off on the rant there, but basically, yeah, um, if you get your hands on one of these, look up Guitar Center uh, used section, if you're in the U.S., and, um, or in any other country. For the map, I think, but um, because I got this for a buck fifty, and I got a five thousand for uh five hundred bucks, uh so you know which I could turn around and sell for a thousand dollars easily, so but you know I just moved to Europe, so I wasn't able to bring that with me, so it's still back back home in Brooklyn, so I got a couple of pieces of gear back there, but with me here I have five hundred and one thousand, so um, yeah man um you know, this is dope. This will make you. This won't make you a dope beat maker, but it'll get you a step closer. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that was some uh, something that made sense in that rant. And, uh, yeah, peace.